we kind of expect this one to be done as the first part of the speaker rod. Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop. We're now standing in our, uh, in our workshop and it's finally gone quiet. It's a Saturday and it's slightly past dinner time and we have been busy. For the past two weeks, we have more or less, well, up to the past two weeks, we more or less finished our, um, all of our production equipment that we need for the, for the very big speaker rocket. And last weekend, we finally started like really putting stuff into production. We've singled out a, a nice little piece as the first uh, test object, and that is the uh, that is the intertank section. It's basically a small uh, spacer section between the liquid oxygen tank and the uh, fuel tank on top of it, and it basically it's going to look a little bit like this. So last weekend, then it all started out by cutting something like 80 parts that's needed for this uh, intertank section here. Then we cut the, uh, the outer uh, sheet of it as well. And, and all of these pieces have just been processed over this weekend and the last weekend. So we are now more or less at the point where we simply just need to start welding. So right now we're working on the, uh, this intertank section that will actually be between the two tanks. So there will be a, a small volume that will occupy some, uh, some valves and uh, some uh, pressure sensors and uh, pipelines and stuff. And so, um, so we're setting up to, uh, to weld part of that interstage together now. So we cut these, uh, these three uh, parts. And uh, so now we're mounting them on the, on the welding jig to make sure that the, these three parts, that, the, uh, that they match up completely. So you can see we have a weld seam over here. So we'll uh, we just have to align this uh, as as good as uh, possible and uh, make a weld here, and similarly uh, 120 degrees across and 120 degrees across over here. So we got three welds to make up uh, one flange, and you might of course ask, why did you cut this in three pieces? On the plasma cutter, you could cut it in in one piece out of a sheet, but to uh, to cut this uh, almost one, dia one meter diameter, use a, a huge piece of, uh, of plate. So by, uh, by uh, plasma cutting them in, in three pieces, we uh, use a lot of less plate. The uh, downside is, of course, that we have to make these three welds. But uh, money-wise, it's a much better solution for us. And so we also just uh, rolled the, uh, the, the side that will go on here. So we might, I don't know if we will start to weld that today or if we'll do that uh, next week. But priority right now is to, to get these three welds done. And then uh, we might start welding the, uh, the side panel as well. So we can take a, a little closer look at the, uh, the intertank section. It basically consists of a standard flange top and bottom. These are the two flanges with a lot of holes that's gonna integrate to the two sections on either side of it, the two tank sections. And in order to give it enough structural integrity and, and be able to, I mean, it basically is gonna take all the load between those two heavy tanks. It has, first of all, six big stainless steel profiles, uh, upright stainless steel profiles on the inside between the flanges. Then it has a about 60 uh, small triangular uh, support stiffening plates that will distribute the, uh, the loading of the entire section uh, so that it can actually handle this, even though it's actually made from, from reasonably light materials. On top of that, um, another stiffening element is going to be the, uh, the cylindrical outer sheath, which is quite heavy duty in this case, also considering where it's going to be located. And we will have uh, six um, inspection hatches, more or less. Uh, right now, these are just uh, 
tagged, but they will be removed once the intertank uh, section has been welded and done. And then we'll have a, uh, just with, as with Nexo 2, we will have shell plates for accessibility in a weekend or two. We kind of expect this one to be done as the first part of the speaker rocket. Now, that isn't like all we've been doing, because in the past week we also uh, received the end caps for the uh, speaker tanks, these almost one meter diameter end caps. And we think we already figured out a way to actually put those in the plasma cutter as well, because the torch height control mechanism of the plasma cutter should be sufficient to cut the center hole in the end cap to begin with. And then we need two offset holes from center and the torch height controller should be capable of matching the torch height when we're actually cutting these, uh, these holes, although it's at a sloped surface. So we're gonna try that out as well, but if it works, it's just cleaning out the holes and then start uh, welding in the tubing and suddenly the speaker tanks are underway. So things are happening pretty fast around here these days. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a nonprofit all volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website www.compsub.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.